the concept of post-traumatic stress disorder has really been around for centuries, but we know it by different names. So shell shock or combat fatigue or soldier's heart. PTSD is the abbreviated and common term for post-traumatic stress disorder. I want to reinforce that what we're talking about is certain individuals who have either experienced or witnessed a life-threatening event, such as combat or sexual assault, who has then gone on to develop a set of symptoms that have endured over time and are causing difficulty in their life functioning. The hallmark symptom of PTSD is actually avoidance. So if you've experienced something really horrible, it is understandable and natural to not want to have to think about that, relive it, feel those painful feelings again. And so what happens is people try to push away those thoughts, those feelings, those memories. Unfortunately, that's precisely what tends to keep people stuck and unable to process their PTSD recovery. If folks know that in maybe eight to 16 weeks, we can, we can get them feeling better where they don't need to suffer from those symptoms the rest of their lives, I think that's a really important message to communicate. Perhaps the most important thing to recognize with Vietnam era veterans is that the average age of a person serving in Vietnam in a combat zone was 19 years old. And so unlike current conflicts where people may experience multiple deployments, the average age is actually several years older. So Vietnam era veterans were serving in incredibly stressful combat zones at a developmentally very young age where male brains aren't fully developed until well into their 20s. And so you're talking about a developing brain being exposed to extreme and severe trauma. And I think that is a critical difference when looking at the risks for developing PTSD for that particular veteran population. The other really key thing that is different is social support as being one of the best protective factors for not developing PTSD. And so the social context in which um, those who served in Vietnam returned to America, I think was very influential in shutting people out from getting the social support they needed, encouraging people to keep their experiences secret and private, as well as simply not having the same access to healthcare and resources that we have available today. One of the things we do when we bring people into our military is we start by training them how to become soldiers and be prepared for battle. And part of that includes running into the face of danger and being stoic and checking your emotions. We don't always do a great job of unteaching people how to behave and think that way. There seems to be a subset of Vietnam era veterans who really have been functioning fairly well throughout their lives. And now that they are becoming disabled or retiring, some of the strategies they've used to cope with symptoms over time break down or are no longer available. So there's an increase in distress because of changes in life. There are really two types of therapy that have the most compelling research and that every VA in our nation is offering. So one is called cognitive processing therapy for PTSD or CPT. Um, that therapy really involves looking at your thoughts um, and understanding what your memories and thinking about the trauma are and how they experience your emotions and day-to-day -day functioning now. Similarly to that is prolonged exposure therapy, and that involves more talking with your therapist about the actual event in more detail, and then also getting out in the community and doing things you've been avoiding. Both are extremely effective treatments, people are wonderfully resilient and people can get well. And what we see is that there are veterans who come in who, who are really struggling, their symptoms are interfering with their day-to-day -day life. And after completing treatment, they no longer are experiencing those consistent ongoing painful memories. They're not engaging in unhealthy avoidance that keeps them from living their life and doing things that matter to them. They aren't having to hit the deck every time. Um, a plane goes by and so when you start looking at can I live without depression and fear and horrible pain, painful memories and bad nightmares that's what we want to help you with but but we're never going to turn back time and we're never going to make the trauma go away.